Hello, my name is Nicholas, and welcome to another episode of Programming Concepts. Today we're going to talk about generics. To do that, we're going to use some examples, and those examples will be in Java. So let's start by talking about type inference. Uh, here we have an example where we have uh, in instantiate uh, an item. So uh, item here is a variable of type item. Item is a class we've defined somewhere else. And we instantiate a new item and this object and be becomes that new instance of item. On the next line, we have a list of items uh, called inventory and we instantiate that to be a new array list. The array list is an implementation of the list interface. One thing to note here is this item uh, inside the, the kind of diamond operator looking things. The, the, this is called a type parameter. So when we're typing this variable inventory, to be of type list, we're additionally passing a type parameter of the value item to that type list. Uh, finally, we, we add an item to the inventory. It's fine because item is of type item and everything compiles just okay. However, uh, if we were to, to make a, a string variable called name, assign the value John to it, and try to add that string to the inventory, it's not going to work. The reason is that, that we gave this type parameter item to the list and the list knows that it should only contain items. So at compile time, when you're trying to add something else than an item into it, so, so here we're trying to add a string, it's going to know, the compiler is already going to know that th this is no good, this is not going to work and it isn't going to comply. But why and how does this actually work under the hood? Uh, so, so, we're going to look a little bit at list, but before that, let, let's look at what list isn't in Java. So we're actually uh, going to end up jumping into the into list.java, the actual list interface uh, inside Java's uh, kind of core code. But uh, but let's first take a look at if we were to start implementing this ourselves, where would we start? Try and try and think. You you want to define uh, an interface for list and you have to define a method called add, where you can add an object. You're never going to know what or how, what kind of, uh, what types of objects the, the, the consumer of your, of your list API here is going to want to add. And object, like this would be one way of, of, uh, of kind of def defining this interface. If you just said object here, then you could give it anything and it'll be fine. In, in, in Java, everything inherits from object. Uh, object is kind of <laughs> at the top of the food chain, so to speak. And everything in Java is an object, except for a few primitives. But, but basically, you could add any class you wanted uh, if you had this kind of interface. But uh, it, in, the, in the previous example, we saw that adding uh, a, a string to a list of items didn't work. Well, if we just had this interface here with object, then uh, we wouldn't get any compile time warning because of it, because that's fine, a string is an object. And the item was an object, but so is a string, and the compiler is not going to complain about anything. And now, finally, we get to Java generics and, and how, how we can use them. If we look at list, th this is the actual uh, uh, interface for list and, and, and the code, if you jump into the, the Java code for it. So a public interface list, where here we have again this kind of diamond operator looking thing with the letter E. And then the interface for the add method is interesting. The typing here, so it takes a parameter E of type E, this kind of capital E. And of course, the thing to note here is that this capital E is the same capital E as here. And this lets, lets, uh, lets it know that when you kind of declare a variable of type list and give it the type variable, uh, well, the type variable E in this case, uh, we gave it item earlier. This lets it know that, that it will infer the type here and know that whenever the add method is called, it's expecting uh, an object of the same type as when, when the variable, when the list variable was declared. So if you've looked into generics before, uh, you see a lot of examples with different letters. So sometimes it's E, K, N, whatever. Uh, this, this can be a little bit confusing. This is completely arbitrary, what, what's used here, right? And these are just conventions, what's used in, in, in certain cases. And 
what's recommended to be used. Uh, I could actually just call it whatever I want and this will work just fine. If you go to the official Oracle Java documentation, you'll find the type parameter naming conventions for Java. So you should use E when the type parameter is an element or K when it's a key and so on. But these are just conventions and well, nothing's forcing you to use them, but it is highly recommended. So that was a very brief introduction to generics. Uh, we barely scratched the surface. So, so I recommend you to, to go and find more information about this if you're interested. But thank you for listening today. I hope you learned something and until next time.